Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins and I want to show you today how to easily put together this diorama card. This is such good fun and I have got the perfect new items that you can use in your diorama as well. I'm going to walk you through step by step exactly how to do it from scratch. No dies for the actual card base, just simply a scoreboard and a trimmer and then we can decorate with these new textures items from the Secret Garden collection. So there's four main items from the new textures secret garden collection that I'm going to be using to create the diorama. So the focus here is going to be the elegant gates. Now these are dies that are absolutely stunning, so intricate, and you've got one for each side, each half. You can actually switch these if you wish to have gates of a slightly different shape. You can absolutely do that, but I'm going to have them this way. Might even apply a little bit of gilding wax to them as well to give them a metallic look. Then I've got the winter rose and that creates these. I've got two of these for the front of the card. There is another video sharing how this is built, how to make it look as dimensional as possible. So keep an eye on my channel for that. Then I've got my sentiments here and then I've also got the 3D embossing folder which is called the Great Wall. This one is absolutely stunning. So with all these items I have prepared my card bases and we're going to start with white cardstock first of all. So I've got four main pieces to this card base. The first one is a 7 inch by 7 inch piece of cardstock as strong as possible. So ideally you want 280, 300 GSM, something like that, even stronger if you've got it. Then I cut three additional pieces. Pieces. Now these are much larger. So each of these is you've got your seven inch square scored into the center of them. They are seven inches tall, seven inches wide. And then on the end of the seven inches for the front panel, I've got two tabs that are around about just under half a centimeter. So these are, um, at, sorry, half an inch. They're around about a centimeter each. So they will then fold round. So in total, the length of each of these cardstock pieces is your seven inches plus your four centimeters there if you'd prefer to do half inches for these you can so if say these are half an inch that's around about an eight inch piece there so into each of these I've got three identical I've then cut apertures as you can see with nesting dies I started at the front with the largest one which is around about a six inch square then I did a slightly smaller one, five inch square, and then I did a four inch square. And I made sure these were as central as possible. So now I've got all the layering pieces to build up my diorama. But I want to build up the layers before I glue it together. It's much easier than trying to get your pieces inside. So for the back panel, I am going to have this beautiful brick wall embossing folder pattern. Now, this is not one piece. This is actually two pieces. If I turn it over, you can see I've overlapped. I've actually cut along the edge. And this is that 3D embossing folder that I was showing you, the great wall, just simply with craft cardstock. I haven't gone in with any ink or anything I could do. Um, I might see how it looks put together first of all. But because it's a 3D folder, we've got so much depth going on in here it really is absolutely stunning now as you can see I've gone almost the height of the card but I haven't gone the width because my tabs from my other pages as such of the card need to stick to the base there so I have left that free sticking to this bumpy surface isn't going to be ideal so now I can glue down this panel into my background first of all this is going to also strengthen the card because I've got of two pieces of craft cardstock here. Now the reason I have got this join is because the folder is a five by seven inch one and obviously I needed a little bit wider than that. So the seven inches was perfect but I just needed to overlap. The way I got the seamless transition between the two was along the edge of one of them I actually cut around some of the bricks to give it this wavy edge and then when it's placed down there it really is almost invisible to see where that guideline is. Now I'm going to be putting a sentiment in here and this is created with the stamp and die set those sentiments that I just showed you but this I'm going to wait until at least the first layer is over the top because otherwise I won't know exactly where to position this one. So the next layer the first layer is going to be the smallest four inch cutout panel. Now this is also going to have a brick wall panel into it and I have already gone ahead and die cut the same die and again I'm going to be leaving that strip down the side so that I can stick the next layer on top. So with this I need to first of all glue on my brick wall pattern 
And now I can start constructing the card base by folding over the tabs to create this U shape on each end. And I'm going to apply glue to the underneath of each of these strips here and glue them onto the sides of the card base. So I'm going to use a wet glue for this. If you prefer, you can definitely use a tape and it may be easier for you to position one, let that almost grip and dry before you then put the next one on. Now these two layers are glued together and it's already feeling really sturdy. I can put my sentiment directly in the center there. So I stamped the are the best in black ink onto the white cardstock. I then die cut the U from black and from some pink that matches the flowers that we're going to put on in at the end. So just some glue or you could use foam tape here if you prefer. Now on this layer, I'd like some leaves peeking out. So I'm going to be using these large leaves. Now these come in the set with the florals, but I've just chosen to die cut the leaves on their own. I'm going to be placing these so that they will be hidden by the following layer. So if we just position this one over the top, we can see how much we need to tuck them underneath. So there I really have gone for quite a random spread of the leaves. I'm going to adhere this in just a moment, but it's going to be easier if I do the gates now. So the gates are black at the moment, but I think I'd like to put some gilding wax on these before I put it on, just to give them a silvery look. Now there's a good chance you're going to get silver polish on your desk if you don't put something underneath to preserve it. So I'm just going to use the tiniest little bit on my hand and just buff it into the surface of the gates. Now I don't want the gates to be completely silver. I'd like them to remain partially black. So just touching the very, very top like so. And hopefully you can see, just about see the difference between the two. We've just got a shimmer to the right hand one. I'm going to do this again to this second one. And now we can attach the gates to the diorama card. I'm going to do this simply by adding a small bit of glue down to each of the shorter edges so that the gates can still move a little bit. There's a little bit of flexibility left in them. So again, with the wet glue, just running a thin line up this side. This will hold absolutely fine. I'm actually going to put this just on the very edge there and just above the baseline there as well. So there is a slight gap between the two gates, but I don't mind that because I'm going to have them so that potentially they can open anyway so you can see the sentiment through. So you want to ensure that that is fully dry and then whilst holding down the bit you've glued, gently fold up the rest of the gate. So it doesn't want it to come all the way. You just want to be able to peek through the gates. There we go. So if I just hold that, you can see the amount that we've got there. That will close if it goes into a box envelope, but you can also lift it up to see more. So there I've got this so far. Now I need to fold over the edges again, glue onto the base that we've got at the moment, and then put the final piece on the top. So this is the one that's got the six inch aperture in the front. Again, I'm going to be gluing this on in exactly the same way as before. And as I said at the beginning, these florals I built up using the winter rose die set. So these are going to be placed on either side. I have made sure that they're not identical as well. Um, I might actually tuck the stems in so it looks as if they're coming out from the center of the card just at the bottom here and then climbing up the edges. So a little bit of wet glue for these. And there we have a really pretty diorama card. This is a dimensional card, a box card, but once everything's dry, you can twist the whole thing to fold flat if you wish. I'm not going to do this right now, um, purely because I know that some of that glue is still wet, but I would give it an hour and then I would totally flatten it one way or the other. And you could pop it in a large envelope and send it. You've got room on the back for your message as well. So hopefully you've enjoy seeing how easy it is to create your own diorama cards and these gates are just absolutely perfect to put inside one of them along with the flowers and of course the embossing folder as well. 
So thank you for joining me. You'll find all the products that I've used and mentioned in the description below. They are all linked to Craft Stash for you. And I hope to see you again very soon on my channel for another card tutorial. Take care, everybody. I'll see you soon.